Hey, what's going on guys? It's your boy Nistro here, and we are back discussing the Flame Swordsman support. So last time we talked about Infernobles, we were discussing the, the possibility that Flame Swordsman could be decent support for the Infernoble deck, and as it turns out, it was true. And it gives Infernoble also better plays going second, a higher ceiling going first, and a better grind game in general. I've seen boards get cleared and then remade with Infernoble using this new Flame Swordsman support simply because it's so easy. This new Fighting Flame Swordsman is a one card act access to basically the entire engine so it's actually pretty cool now even though it does access pretty much the entire engine this one card only ends on the new fusion and that's kind of like the name of the game with infernoble at this point it's like nothing really does a lot by itself you kind of need to mix and match your pieces wanted engine doesn't get you anything by itself you need to mix it with like a ogier renaud doesn't do anything by itself brad monte doesn't do anything by herself all these pieces all these cards need something else to mix it with for for them to be successful so this is just a sample list this isn't anything to set in stone yet so triple fighting flame swordsman if you don't know what he does he adds a spell or trap that mentions flame swordsman from deck to hand on summon and then it, when he's sent to grave he mills a monster that mentions flame swordsman or flame swordsman itself from deck or extra deck to graveyard which is actually going to come up we got our fighting flame sword it's a quick play searcher spell it also has the ability to pop cards if a fire warrior is battling and it can protect cards that mention flame swordsman from from targeting from effects that target we have flame swords realm it gives you protection when you normal summon a fire warrior so they won't be able to respond which unfortunately isn't really that often <laughs> the only effects you care about on normal summon are ogier and fighting flame so i don't think this is like that first effect is going to come up much but it may come up if it was on special summon then this would be crazy but since it's only on normal summon it's just all right right and then it could send a monster from field or hand to grave which is a cost it doesn't play around shifter it's special summons a flame flame swordsman from your extra deck treated as a proper fusion summon so because it mentions flame swordsman also it's searchable by both this quick play spell and our fighting flame so that's pretty cool and then uh it also has a battle effect to manipulate attack next Next, we have our two fusion spells. Uh, well, I guess I should introduce Salamandra first, right? So Salamandra, he can equip to a warrior monster from hand or grave. And when he's equipped to Flame Swordsman, it gains 700 attack. And when he's sent to the graveyard by anything, he can add a Salamandra spell or trap from deck to hand. And these are your two Salamandra spells. And uh, the way that they work this new support is that the Salamandra spells are the fusion spells. So there's Salamandra Fusion, which is a equip spell that fusion summons and there's salamandra with chain which although on field it has the effect to equip to a monster and then book a moon a monster on the field in graveyard it can fusion summon it gives you access to both cards that fusion summon either during your turn or during your uh, uh, opponent's turn depending on how you want to play the deck if you want to focus more on a flame swordsman core and its ability to recur its own resources i think you may want to bump salamandra fusion up to two but because we're playing wanted i think salamandra chain is a lot better in a wanted variant of flame swordsman with infernoble so i think like playing both won't really hurt you but if you feel like focusing more on salamandra fusion that's fine if you feel like cutting salamandra fusion folks more on Salamandra with Chain, both of them work. Even though this is a equip spell, it doesn't really give you much to your actual Infernobles, right? So it can equip to any Fire Warrior, but all it does for the monster that it's equipped to is that it gains 700 and if it will be destroyed, you can destroy this card instead, right? So, I mean, I guess, you know, if you open Brad Monte with this, you can equip an Angel Ring to a monster, but most times this is going to be sent to the graveyard for its second effect to summon out the big uh, Flame Swordsman fusion monster. And then after that, you can banish it with like Gear Freed to summon Gear Freed if you have access to it that turn. So most times this is not gonna stay on field. So it's it's not that great of an equip spell, it's a better fusion spell. This support has really good synergy with like the rest of the deck. It kind of, there are some conflictions with the regular Flame Swordsman that kind of suck. Like you can make like a Baron you can make an ultimaya but sometimes because you have to make a second roll in for it to be able to be summoned back from the graveyard because it's not because the first one summoned off of angelica isn't properly summoned you aren't able to take full advantage of the fact that like basically you have to use flame swordsman a very restrictive way sometimes unless you open a lot of engine if you if you only open one to two engine your flame swordsman is not going to do much other than go into the big guy but if you open three or four engine cards then you can go for a second roll and then you could turn this into a baron you could turn it into ultimaya there's actually a lot of options as to how you can go about using 
using your Flame Swordsman. Just keep that in mind. That's why this deck is so engine heavy without a lot of interruption. But that's how Infernoble was anyway, right? Like if we wasn't playing this Flame Swordsman stuff, it would just, we'd probably have like three more slots for hand traps. We'd be on one more museum and then we'd be on like two two more O gear. Like it just gives you a more versatile package to work with on top of what your Infernobles can already do. So we got Rota, Triple Renaud, Gearfried, our typical Infernoble package line, Brad Monte because of Angelic Ring, All Mace, any deck with Gearfried, I think like All Mace is kind of a staple. Durandal is good here. Joy use actually does put in work in this deck. It's ability to summon monsters from hand or to even recycle. Like the fact you could pivot off of it with uh, All Mace, I think it's a lot better in this deck because you have Fighting Flame. If you ever want to turn your Infernoble stuff into the Flame Swordsman stuff, you use something like Joy Use. But if you open very little engine, then I don't think that it's worth it. Like it's better if you open the Flame Swordsman stuff than, you, than it is if you dig into it. The rest of the deck is uh, self-explanatory. So the big ultimate Flame Swordsman, what he does is that he requires two very specific materials. He requires Flame Swordsman plus Fighting Flame Dragon, which is another new fusion out of Maze Millennia and he can target a monster your opponent controls and destroy it and inflict 500 to your opponent which is great and it's a quick effect if he's equipped with an equip card one card combo line you end on Salamandra equipped on ultimate flame swordsman so he is an interruption using the in using the engine by itself when you mix this with the Infernoble engine then you're using Salamandra to trigger Angelica and you can equip ultimate flame swordsman with something like a roland and so roland will be able to give it its ability to be used as a quick effect now at the start of damage step if he battles he can double his attack until the end of the turn and that's not his original attack that's his current attack so if you mix this with museum with roland he's gaining a thousand he's at 38 and then you double that so that's like 76 but he destroys himself at the end of the turn which sometimes won't matter because if you're going for a game, why would it matter if you, you know, KO yourself? Now, Flame Swordsman, you don't have to play him at two because if you go for the Salamandra with Chain, this actually shuffles Flame Swordsman back into the deck to Fusion Summon. It shuffles the materials back. So you don't need to play two, but it's really a personal preference. If you feel like playing a more pure Flame Swordsman build, you can definitely cut this down to one. SP Little Knight requires effect monsters, so you can't just like Flame Swordsman into SP you have to use Flame Swordsman the way that the engine wants you to use it. You can't really pivot with it as much, but you can you can cut Flame Swordsman down to one, but I think two is a good number in case you want to play double Salamandra Fusion. And then Fighting Flame Dragon, nine times out of 10, you're not actually summoning this card. What you're doing is you're milling it with your Fighting Flame Swordsman because it can mill from your extra deck as well. Puts this in the graveyard, and when this is in the graveyard, it has a quick effect to target a warrior fusion, equip to it, and then it gains 700 attack, and it can, it can attack twice, right? So you basically allow your ultimate flame swordsman to double its attack and then be able to attack again, allowing you to go for game way easier. You don't need any other monster on your field other than ultimate flame swordsman to go for game with this new support. So that's why the deck is a lot better at going second because you actually have a really easy line into a guaranteed OTK with a ultimate flame, assuming that you open the flame swordsman stuff. The rest of the extra deck is kind of standard. You do kind of need Dempsey sometimes because Ogier with a Turpin still allows you to go into Dempsey. And sometimes the Infernoble that you search is more important than like the ones that you already have. Most times, if you go like Angelica, Mill, Summon Back, usually you only end on like a Charles, but the ability to dig for any Infernoble in deck might actually be sometimes is sometimes more important. We're also on Triple Renaud because Renaud is like the best Infernoble paired with Fighting Flame. It, it allows you to make Angelica. Oliver, I was almost gonna play more copies of, but it's like it's it's requirement to mill another warrior or something doesn't sit right with me. So I'd rather just play the triple Renaud. I also have Sunlight Wolf here just to recur resources, right? Like if you summon Renaud late in your turn or if you summon Sunlight Wolf late in your turn. You can recur some of your Flame Swordsmen's or good follow-up like Ricardo over here. If you're playing more of a pure build, I think Ultimaya has a spot in your deck. If you want to take full advantage of the Wanted Engine, if you want Wanted Engine to be a one-card starter, you can play Rocket Salamander. You just got to be careful because Rocket Salamander only summons from deck. He doesn't summon from hand. Astolfo is actually pretty good in this deck because if you want to take full advantage of Angelica milling a monster and then Roland being a level 5 tuner, Astolfo can banish like the 
let's say a fighting flame swordsman and then he can become level four so you don't actually have to use your ogier to summon out charles so, so you can save your summon back off of museum like to summon uh, from the spawn trap zone off of museum for when you actually summon charles and so you won't be warrior locked for the turn if you do that i was gonna theory with promethean princess but i'm gonna wait until phantom nightmare comes out i just want to show what flame swordsman can do for now next month we'll get into the newer support just because infernoble is such a like the pathways are always broad as in terms of what you can do with the deck so i don't want to overwhelm myself at the moment the one benefit of playing the fighting flame swordsman over the other starters like the battling boxer engine or the super heavy engine is that super heavy has a really really high ceiling but it sucks at going second because you cannot activate any spells or traps before your main phase before you activate that bike before you activate that wakashi and you also play more bricks in the super heavy variant the battling boxer variant is like the cleanest variant you really don't play that many bricks you just play three upper cutter one spar most times that's not even a big deal it has good ceiling you still get to angelic ring plus charles plus potentially even a baron and it's really good at what it does but it does not allow you to go into battle phase meaning it's really weak going second oftentimes it's really only good going first and then fighting flame offers you a starter engine that not not only is good at going first or second but also offers you more versatility as to what kind of boards you can make other than super heavy but like it gives you boss monster or a, another end piece on your end board that kind of works better with the engine you don't need to play more stuff outside of the engine to kind of make ultimate flame swordsman work you really just need the slots dedicated in main to the flame swordsman stuff anyway if you're playing flame swordsman you're playing anyway and it's really good it just doesn't beat what's already out there's no clear winner as to which engine works best it's really you get to pick and choose now this one being the most recent and the most expensive people may not go for this route but don't don't tell me that you don't want to summon ultimate flame swordsman like this is one of the coolest looking monsters we've ever seen he's got like this sick ass armor like don't tell me you don't want it like you want to summon this card everyone wants to summon this card first off i want to show how fighting flame can get you to the boss monster so fighting flame searches flame swords realm flame swords run can send fighting flame itself summon out the regular flame swordsman fighting flame mill uh salamandra salamandra gets salamandra fusion fusion equipped to flame swordsman flames uh fusion send flame swordsman summon ultimate salamandra can equip to ultimate from grave and now you have a 3500 beater that can pop once per turn that's just off of one card right not the best one card combo but it's in a way a, a more unique one card combo than before this is another pure flame swordsman combo um and as you can probably guess because we use an equip card mid combo we are allowed to access gear freed so we go for ultimate flame just like we just did but now, just with one more card in our field, we now have two negates because we we no longer need the Salamandra fusion. And I don't think there's any way to actually get this out of Graveyard. So once it's in the Graveyard, it's sitting there unless you have a Infernal Knight Renaud in hand. But yeah, ultimately this is probably gonna stay in the Grave or Banish. And Renaud can get it from the Banish zone anyway. So it's not even like we're doing any real damage here. This theory also kind of makes me curious because it this kind of implies that we could play a low to the ground build. Like if this was mixed with like non-engine, we could potentially play like a decent low to the ground build that like just controls the game using our flame swordsmen and our gear freeds. Impactful hand traps plus like gear freed and like ultimate flame swordsman. Like I could see a trap heavy variant of this um, you know, like you mix this with like a floodgate or something, maybe a solemn. You could definitely cook. So now I want to show you guys what a Renaud offers you with the Finding Flame Swordsman. Beautiful thing about sending Fighting Flame for Angelica Synchro is that it gets to chain block Angelica, so now they can't they can't Ash Blossom it. And Ash Blossom is the only thing that this card loses to because if they imperm it then it can just resolve its second effect without you needing to waste your monsters in, in a graveyard. So email Salamandra, Salamandra gets you a search, Salamandra equip, Angelica banish, you get Museum, Museum's gonna add us Almace, Almace is gonna equip, 
Ogier's gonna summon. I mean, equip and then summon. Ogier's gonna mill. We're gonna get gear freed. Almace is going to get us into Renaud. And then Renaud is actually going to add us back a gear freed. Roland's going to equip to Charles. Charles is gonna go into Charlemagne. Charlemagne can then, you know, it, it, it gets the full effect. And then we can f send the Renaud with um, our Flame Swords Realm to summon out the Flame Swordsman. And this is actually really cool because instead of just going all my straight into joy use into add back, which would have just gotten us gear free to hand. And so we wouldn't have had the extra body to send with Flame Swords Realm. We would have had to send another monster from Handerfield to Graveyard to resolve this card. But because we could summon back the Renaud, which which did not use its effect earlier in the turn because there was no target. Now we get to take to full advantage of the fact that we get like an, an extra disruption on field. Fusion, right? Ultimate Flame, Gear Freed. And then End Phase, we get to equip. And so you're ending on two disruptions with Charles. Ultimate Flame Swordsman doesn't have an uh, equip at the moment, but he will once it hits the opponent's turn. And then we have a Negate with Gear Freed, which is four interruptions off of just those two cards, which is pretty cool. And then the, the cool thing about um, Emperor Charles is that Emperor Charles can equip another Fighting Flame Swordsman from deck. And when he negates a spell or trap card, he can send Fighting Flame to the graveyard and then Fighting Flame can mill the Fighting Flame Dragon. And then because Fighting Flame Swordsman mills Fighting Flame Dragon, Fighting Flame Dragon can equip two Ultimate Flame Swordsman during your opponent's turn, so you don't need to waste your roll in on Ultimate Flame Swordsman. You can equip it with a Fighting Flame Dragon, which is objectively a better equip card for uh, Ultimate Flame Swordsman. So, oh yeah, we could also send it with Gear Freed. That's <laughs> that's also true. So, in in this particular setup, we could send it for a monster or spell or, or trap negation. Any basically anything that they activate, Flame Swordsman gets sent. Uh, fighting Flame Mills, and then New Chain, you can equip Fighting Flame to Ultimate Flame. Now that you still have three more interruptions, you still have Roland Equip and Grave if you, if you want to um, trigger Emperor Charles, right? Because clearly triggering Emperor Charles here makes no sense. And you have Fighting Flame Swordsman, which is now sitting at 4,000 attack, thanks to Museum plus Fighting Flame, able to go up to 8k if this thing lasts the turn. So now I want to go Fighting Flame plus Randall. Which is somewhat different because now we have a target to add back off of Renaud. Now this to Randall is a bit of a dud because it doesn't it, it, it can't do anything anymore than just target to equip or something like that, so. Now we can go Angelica, right? Our typical Ogier equip, Ogier summon, Ogier mill, all mace equip, all mace add back Turpin. And that's actually important because um, that allows us to get our Turpin back to hand. Charlemagne equip, Sword Realm. ultimate flame and yeah like it just allows you to get the turpin before the ultimate flame swordsman which is why again you saw on the list i played triple renaud and two to randall because opening renaud is just better <laughs> it's just better to open renaud than it is to open to randall which in some ways it's like that's kind of weird like you isn't opening to randall better like no opening renaud is better it's not as strong as the last board yeah, Emperor Charles can re-equip the Salamander Fusion, so if he were to be destroyed, you can destroy Salamander Fusion instead, but otherwise, that's about it, right? You could also equip the Fighting Flame from deck with, with Emperor Charles to mill the Fighting Flame Dragon, but then, you know, it takes up too much space. Like, you're gonna have to negate something with Charles before you do that. Now we get to see what the Wanted Engine offers Flame Swordsman. And this one is gonna be a little more out there because it's using Diabell Star and and, and, and wanted poster. Now notice we're actually resolving our Flame Swords Realm early, and there's actually a good reason for this. Um, 
because we want to get Salamander with Chain in hand, and Salamander with Chain really only works in Graveyard. Uh, there is, in the next combo, you're going to see us use keep this on field, but um, it really works well as, as like a discard for Diabell Star as well. So Diabell Star gets to drop it, summon itself, and then it gets to activate original Sinful Spoils by sending the Flame Swords Realm, which allows for really good um, resource management just off of two cards. We've we've gotten uh, what's soon to be four bodies. And TG's are making a guest appearance here because it's a one card way into Angelica without Warrior locking us. You could summon Ricardo here, but Ricardo would A, Warrior lock us, and B, uh, well, yeah, it, it would Warrior lock us and not allow us to, to take full advantage of the, the fact that the Bellstar is still on field. We cannot use these two to summon SP and we don't want to warrior lock ourselves early because we still want to go for like an IP and you, you could have went IP before this you definitely could have went IP then activate original simple spoils but rocket salamander screw serpent but there's a reason why we're going to keep it on field and you're going to see it real soon so salamandra angelica go for roland museum Museum effects. Get Durandal, Durandal equip, Durandal search. Get us Renaud, Renaud effect, add back. Now we go for Ultimaya. And this is actually really cool because Ultimaya allows us to go for uh, a Crystal Wing. And we had to keep a warrior on field. It, like when I was theorying this combo out, I was like, man. Um, like at first I, I didn't have the Renaud on field because I went straight into Baron, but then I was like, wait a minute, I, I warrior locked myself and I can't use the Bell Star for anything after you warrior lock yourself, uh, except for SP, but then Flame Source is just going to sit there looking like a dunce. So if you go for a Baron, uh, Baron is how you e equip a warrior monster to it. Then I was like, okay, I can go for Ultimaya. I can not warrior lock myself, go for Ultimaya, but then it's like... Man, if I go for Ultimaya, then I have no warriors on the field to equip my uh, Infernobles from Grave on to, so that's kind of tough. So then I figured out, in this way, you could bring out the Renaud. Renaud is a warrior on your field that you can equip to, and then you could Museum Summon Ogier, Mill Turpin, go for Roland, right? And it's like it's really great because you this this Durandal is just a dud that you added back just to trigger the Ultimaya. It, it's, it's actually really cool how this works out. And I get Durandal equip, and Durandal is still a dud, but only to so that you can have access to your Turpin. Go for Charles. Charles equip. Emperor Charles the Great. And now, because you, you went into Roland properly, you get to mill the Angelic Ring. You get to search really good follow-up with uh, your Gear Freed. Get, you get to equip Fighting Flame from deck, and you also have IP Masquerina here. And now you're asking, it's like, where does the Flame Swordsman part of the engine come in? Well, as soon as you negate anything with uh, Emperor Charles, you mill Fighting Flame Swordsman. Fighting Flame Swordsman is going to trigger and mill Fighting Flame Dragon. And as soon as Fighting Flame Dragon hits the graveyard, you can trigger Salamander with, with Chain in your graveyard to banish it and then shuffle back the materials, which is Fighting Flame plus Flame Swordsman summon out your ultimate flame swordsman now because it's summoned with salamandra with chain it gets destroyed at the end of the turn so what do you want to do with it you have your ip so that you trigger roland you equip it to your ultimate flame swordsman that can trigger charlemagne to, to pop something he has an effect in graveyard right by crystal winged it just just to sh you know whatever and then flame swords realm that really good play by this guy to well, by me, to flame swords around while angelic rings on the field to, to with the uh, angelic ring effect. And now we get to go for wanted, right? Summon the Abel star, and now ultimate flame swords and gets to pop whatever monster that they summon. Oh, they're still good. They have a set. No, they don't. They don't have a set. Not anymore. <laughs> or, well, I guess we banished the Abel star instead of the set. But yeah, by going into the Salamander with Chain combo, you give yourself a higher ceiling in terms of your end board. You are playing pretty much during your opponent's turn just as much as you are during your turn. 
you have to set up the fighting flame swordsman you have to send it to grave to negate once you negate you mill fighting flame dragon then you banish all amount of a chain shuffle them both back fusion summon the ultimate flame swordsman once ultimate flame swordsman is on the field you can equip it with roland pop one you can then trigger you can use ultimate flame swordsman at any other point during the turn pop two then you have sp little knight i mean then you have ip go into sp little knight sp little knight banish and that's i believe it's seven interruptions total if you count crystal wing double charlemagne negate plus a pop plus sp little knight plus the banish plus crystal wing negate plus plus the ultimate flame swordsman pop that's seven interruptions and now i want to show you guys the geo franco combo so geo franco if you, if you guys know who he is he's a really big infernoble guy he's like the infernoble guy and so he kind of likes this flame swordsman stuff with this deck it's like this hand is fighting flame plus dia bell star where you don't have to send your resources on field where it's like you draw more engine and so it's it's a similar way, except you get one more interruption. So I'll, I'll let them go go about it. And this time we don't have to use anything that we wouldn't play normally, like TG Rocket Salamander. We can go for the IP earlier, and then we go for the Ricardo because we don't mind that we're Warrior Lock now. Baron's a good card. Um, fucking. SP Little Knight's a good card, Infra Noble Knights are good cards, Ultimate Flame Swordsman is a good card. And notice how we're not using the Salamandra with Chain to access all of our engine. Why? Because we had extra monsters in hand, or extra cards in hand to discard, right? We had an extra monster in hand to send with Flame Swords Realm. So now we get to, to keep more of our resources on field because we, we have more stuff in hand. Sometimes you have to be crafty with it, other times you don't have to think too hard about it. It's like, oh, I have an extra monster in hand, an extra Oliver, or an extra Dia Ballstar in hand that I'm not using. Let me discard it for Flame Swords Realm. Now we go for Baron, we Museum, Museum pay 12, get us to Randall, Ogier equip, Museum summon, Ogier mill, mill Turpin, Durandal, Turpin, Turpin has to summon before you unequip Durandal because there's no other equip in Grave other than Roland at the moment, and you don't want to waste your Roland equip. Durandal search, go for, go for Renaud, add back Ricardo for follow-up, go into Roland, Roland, Roland resolve, Roland equip, Emperor Charles, Emperor Charles equip, and now we end on IP plus Charles plus Baron, which Baron is better than Crystal Wing, right? Mm. Mill, Mill Angelic Ring. Now we have twice the amount of follow up. And we still have the Angelic Ring, we still have Flame Swordsman, and we have Salamandra with Chain. So, same way as before, Emperor Charles gets to negate its uh, first spell or trap by milling Fighting Flame. A Fighting Flame is going to trigger, send, sending a Fighting Flame Dragon. Now, Salamandra with Chain is still on the field. What does that mean? Salamandra Chain has to equip to one of your fire monsters on the field. Now, I chose Angelica here. If you just want to get it to the graveyard immediately, you can just equip it to Angelica. If you care about the Book of Moon, then you can equip it to, to your Emperor Charles. So it really depends on how you want to do this. Like, this is a really good interruption because a Book of Mooning a monster, your opponent controls, uh, could be really great for like stopping Typhon. It could be great for stopping uh, potential combos on top of all the negates and disruptions that you already have. Um, also, by triggering Angelica, you, you don't have the body to send with IP Mascarena, so it's, it's a little tough. In case you want to use IP Mascarena early, like now you have to wait until you fusion summon to get IP Mascarena, but, but it's all right. Angelica, Mill, um, Magus, um, Magus gets to shuffle back, get more plus, and then Salamandra gets to shuffle back. So now we get to use Charlemagne, trigger to pop a card on field. We get Ultimate Flame Swordsman to pop a card on field, or pop a monster on field. Now we get IP Mascarena to SP Little Knight. And yeah, I don't believe we used a Baron to gate that whole turn. Well, we, 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 we might have wasted it, but I don't believe we did. Or I don't believe that we should have wasted that Baron to gate the, the entire turn. Angelic Ring stopped like uh, his Fighting Flame Sword that allowed him to activate uh, his set Simple Spoils. 
and yeah like it's a really strong setup like i don't think there is a lot that your opponent can do unless they just straight up summon typhon through this but because of um salamandra chain helps you play around typhon pretty pretty well um so it's 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 a lot better and actually access to sp little knight lets you play around typhon pretty well as well so you have two ways to stop typhon in this variant compared to the other variant i just showed where the only way to beat typhon is to sp you have amazing follow-up there's no reason why you should be losing turn three you have too much gas in your hand like gear freed plus uh ricardo might be too much for them to deal with assuming charlemagne stays on field so let me know what you guys think about the new flame swordsman support how do you guys feel about it how do you guys like flame swordsman with him for noble how do you like flame swordsman by itself would you guys like to see a more low to the ground build or like a more pure variant of flame swordsman something maybe without wanted which is going to be very hard because wanted's too good let me know in the comment section down below and i will catch you guys in the next one